How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donu here again. This time we're going to take a look at quantized energy and photons. So our objectives will be to describe the quantum nature of light, the photoelectric effect, and calculate the energy associated with a photon of light. So let's, let's get going. Turns out light isn't exactly a wave, right? One of the major observations that led to this conclusion is the photoelectric effect. So it's not just a wave. We usually think is light waves. It's not just a wave. So the photoelectric effect, here are the observations. First thing being observed is when light hits a metallic surface, electrons may be emitted. So let's see what that looks like. You get a little photon of light, boom, it gets absorbed, kicks off an electron. So that happens. Each metal has a minimum frequency of light in order to eject an electron. So there needs to be uh, a minimum frequency, a certain energy of light in order to eject an electron. If the light is below that minimum frequency, it won't eject an electron, regardless of the intensity. So for example, here's one photon of a lower frequency light. It hits it, gets absorbed, doesn't kick out an electron, right? We could send a million of those photons, meaning high intensity, right? It still won't kick off an electron because it's below the minimum frequency. Whereas if we send just one photon of the high frequency that's above that minimum, an electron will be emitted. Even though it's not high intensity, it's got the high enough energy for that photon to kick off an electron. All right, so what does that mean? All right, this is what we're seeing. What can we conclude from that? Well, we know that light behaves like a particle as well as a wave. Right? If it was waves, you could have high intensity waves and then that'd be enough to kick off an electron, but it, it's not, it's not just a wave. It also has a particle like behavior, a one to one. So energy and light is delivered in a stream of tiny packets that we're going to call photons. So jumping ahead a little bit, things aren't particles or waves. And that's really the problem with that we have in trying to understand this stuff is we usually think of it's one way or the other it's black or it's white. We have these boxes that we want to put things in so we can understand them because it helps when we group things together, but this, it breaks down. So we can't think of things as particles or waves. Everything is a little bit of both. Sometimes it's more one than the other, but it's always a combination of particle wave behavior. It's not just a particle or a wave. It's always both. So quantized energies. Before the photoelectric effect was observed and explained, Max Planck observed black body radiation, which is basically when you get something really hot and it starts to give off light, like red hot, white hot. And it explained observations with the assumption that energy can only be emitted by atoms in discrete chunks of energy. So this energy had a minimum size, like how a penny is the smallest bit of a dollar. Right? You can't have half a penny. It's quantized, meaning that there's certain discrete fixed amounts. So Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, this is going to be our kind of, our penny to the dollars, but for energy. It's the tiniest little Lego piece possible for energy. So you can have one little chunk of energy, or you can have a couple, but it's always going to be some multiple of that minimum amount, right? It's always going to be some multiple of a penny. So quantized versus continuous. Quantized means only specific values are possible. It's like steps in a stairs or keys on a piano or cents in a dollar. You can only be on a particular step. You can't be in between them. You can hit a particular key on a piano. You can't half hit it. You can't hit in between it. Uh, whereas continuous, any value is possible. It's like a ramp. You could stop at any point on the ramp and have a different height or a trombone. You know, you have that slide. You can stop at any point on that slide. And that's an example of like continuous, right? So why don't we see the, this quantized nature then? You know, if everything's quantized, why don't we observe that in my like everyday experience? Well, each step is really tiny compared to what we typically observe. And we only start to see the quantized behavior at small scale. So it's only when we start using and looking at like atoms and subatomic particles that we'll start to see this. Right, so here I have a circle. It looks like a perfect line. It looks continuous, but if you were to zoom in, you'd be able to see each little pixel, right? It's not this perfect line, this continuous thing. You have finite discrete things. It's either a filled in pixel or it's not. So how do we calculate this energy with light? So we know this, the energy of a photon or E is equal to H times nu, which 
h is Planck's constant. It's roughly 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And nu is the frequency. Uh, the units for that are hertz or per second. A one per second is a hertz, right? So an example, what is the energy of a X-ray photon with a frequency of 3 times 10 to the 19th hertz. All right, well, let me just use my equations. Energy is going to equal Planck's constant times the frequency. So I got 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule second times 3 times 10 to the 19th hertz, which is 1 per second. Seconds cancel out. I'm going to be left with just joules. And then I get 1.99 times 10 to the minus 14 joules. So it's a simple plug and chug, but that's your equation for energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. So here's another similar problem. What is the energy of a photon of red light with a wavelength of 700 nanometers? Ooh, they gave me wavelength instead of frequency. What am I supposed to do? Well, you remember how those two things are related. You know that the speed of light equals the wavelength times the frequency. So then you go, all right, well, let me rearrange this. This equation, I have the frequency. So let me solve for frequency. It's going to equal the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So now I can plug this in to this equation, and I'm going to get E equals H times C over lambda, because that is my frequency. So now those are all numbers I know. I can plug those in. I got 6.63 times 10 to negative 34 joule second times 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second for the speed of light divided by the wavelength, which is 700 times, remember nano means 10 to the minus nine. So 700 times 10 to the minus nine meters. Well, let's see. My meters cancel out, my seconds cancel out, and I'm left with just joules. Awesome. So let me plug and chug. And I get 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So yeah, that's how you do that math. Summarize. Can you describe the quantum nature of light and photoelectric effect and calculate the energy associated with a photon of light? I hope so. If not, I failed you. <laughs> All right, okay, bye.